Willalo, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, episode 48, Danger Street number one, and first issue, special number one. I had uh, mentioned I wanted to do this. I was very intrigued by Tom King, uh, Jorge Fornes, and Dave Stewart, the colorist on this book. This book, it is a 12-issue maxi-series under the Black Label uh, banner for DC, where they were going to tell a story set on Danger Street using all the characters that were in the 13-issue series first-issue specials, which came out in the 70s. Um, I bought the lovely hardcover. It, co- it contains all... It was from, published from 1975 to 1976. It was put out as a tryout book, and it had these people. Atlas, New Gods, Manhunter, Starman, that's the blue disco Starman, uh, Codename Assassin, Assassin uh, Creeper, the Dingbats of Danger Street, Metamorpho, Lady Cop, Green Team, Dr. Fate, Warlord, and Outsiders. And I'm not talking Batman and the Outsiders. And I have read some of these because my brother was like, hey, here, here's, here's a new character. Warlord, first one. Uh, Jerry Conway, uh, Jerry Bingham, or no, I'm sorry, not Jerry Bingham, Dom Newton. Uh, new God starts there, the 70s, Disco Starman, that James Robinson. Atlas, who James uh, is a Kirby. There are three different Kirby creations in this. Steve Ditko doing... Um, the Creeper, Walt Simonson, early Walt Simonson doing Doc Fate. A lot of fun stuff. King, who is... I did not read King's Batman. I'm not a Batman reader. I, there are ears I have read that were, you know, I'm an Englehart Rogers fan. I like the Gene Colan stuff. I liked it in the post-crisis. Um, I liked it when um, Max Allen Collins wrote it. I read it a lot. I, and I've read certain ones, but I've not read his. But I did read his Rorschach, and I liked it, because it was just... I didn't... I don't care if it's um, a spinoff of Watchmen. I consider more Gibbons Watchmen as it's in its own little bubble and people just playing with the characters. I don't mind. Some of it, I like the prequel stuff I didn't really care for. Uh, Rorschach I very much cared for. I don't didn't mind what they used in Doomsday Clock. My issues with Doomsday Clock were one of my pet peeves about comics not being out on time. Nothing to do with the content. Um, but it, but sometimes it takes me out of the story. I think get be published on time. I'm uh, horrible about. It. I re- that's my biggest pet peeve in comics. Um, but I read Rorschach and I was intrigued. I saw the p- publicity for this and I was intrigued. I th- I like concept work. I did theater. I liked stories or stories being created with a. A hook or a catch and saying, okay, I'm going to tell a story involving the characters from this series that I'm fond of and, you know, see where it goes. And I'm very intrigued by it. So every month as it comes out, um, good or bad, however it is, um, and how good or bad these first issue specials are. Some of them aren't gems. They're not masterpieces. I'm going to analyze it issue one, issue one against one, issue two against two, and so forth and so forth. Um, And I think I may have caught a little catch, but let me give you what is basically from the DC website what this series is about. Because I'm not going to really go through, I'm going to do a quick summary, I don't want to give out spoilers. So, joining the Justice League is the goal of any superhero, but what happens when a quest for membership takes a sinister turn? Join Starman, Metamorpho, and Warlord as they look to prove themselves worthy by summoning and defeating Darkseid in battle. Soon they'll learn that calling up upon a new god never ends well and their world is headed for a crisis as a result. The journey to save the day will be a treacherous one filled with princesses, knights, and all kinds of monsters. Each person the heroes encounter plays a crucial role in the sprawling yet gripping narrative that is a little bit silly, a whole lot dark, and completely cool, except the unexpected with the supporting cast featuring Manhunter, Lady Cop, Green Team, and The Creeper. Inspired by the heroes and villains of the first issue special, Tom King, Jorge Fornes, Rorschach, returned for an unforgettable maxi series that reimagining these characters and their stories, a multi character, multi layered crime drama featuring some of DC's most obscure creations. No one will see it coming, but everyone will want to see where it goes. Okay, that is a press release, so not my opinion, but it did. Tri- it made it made me go. Uh, yeah, okay, I like this idea. I like this idea of taking another series 
And they did that commandy challenge, which I don't think really worked, but I was, you know, I enjoyed it as it came in. And they've done other things where different writers wrote, um, you know, each issue, those kind of hooks. But it was good. So what I'm going to do is give a little my take on this first issue. One, it is gorgeous. I really love Jorge Fornes uh, a great deal. I think he, he is a strictly solid, just... I just love it. It's it's something why I like Gibbons. It's why I like, um, I, I think, uh, Mike Lark a lot. It is just a very solid comic book art. It's realistic, but just a little bit cartoony. He creates great... His versions of all the characters are amazing. Uh, and everybody's in this first issue, for the most part. It starts with the Dingbats of Danger Street, which are a Kirby creation... Being followed by uh, Lady Cop, who is a Jerry Conway creation. We see the Creeper. Um, he is a down and a luck. She's chasing them as they're trying to take their uh, four-wheeler out to the outskirts of town to uh, ride in the dunes. And she knows who all these kids are because I guess they're famous on Danger Street. Uh, she is not called Lady Cop. She does not like being called Lady Cop. And she lets them know that. Creeper is washed out. Uh, Jack Ryder is lost his gig because he went hardcore um, on a, a, a news program and he's trying to get a new job. You see that Sto um, Doc Fate's helmet is narrating this as if he is reading a fairy tale. It is as he's reading a fairy tale. You've got um, the three heroes trying to audition. They have Metamorpho has made a sacrifice so they get something they need to challenge Darkseid. You get to see the Manhunters and these are the Manhunters that are in... Um, Englehart's Justice League, and then Millennium. Uh, it's Mark Shaw and the Cult ma uh, Manhunters, and it, they're very. It's very cool. Ryder gets a new job on a conservative newspaper, or not newspaper, a uh, news program, uh, which is run by the Green Team, Boy Millionaires, and they have, and behind them at their office is well, it's Metamorpho's arm. I guess that's metamorphic. Okay, I'm giving something away. They may be involved, and the codename assassins in the background. And this all it all ends with the arrival of Atlas. Atlas being the person we're going to talk to today about today, because I do want to do a little summary of of the very first first issue special. It was released. It was cover date April 1975. Cover artists Jack Kirby, D. Bruce Barry, and Ta. Tatiana Wood, writer Jack Kirby, penciler Jack Kirby, inkers D. Bruce Berry, letterer D. Bruce Berry, editors Jack Kirby and Steve Sherman. Uh, here is the synopsis. The Lizard King, Heisa, raids a small Mediter Mediterranean village, enslaving and killing dozens of people. One youth named Atlas survives the attack, but his family is not quite so lucky. He comes under the care of a man named Chagra, who recognizes that Atlas is the crystal is from the Crystal Mountain? He protects Atlas from his war party, and after they leave, Atlas returns to his home community to find it burned to the ground. Recovering a shard from the Crystal Mountain, he wears he swears revenge against King Hissa. Years pass, and Atlas grows into a powerful man, gifted with Herculean strength and stamina. Chagra remains at his side and promises to lead Atlas to the beast responsible for killing his people. If in, he, in turn, will lead him to the Crystal Mountain. Atlas and Chagra reach the Lizard Kingdom where he exhibits more great feats of strength. He wins a challenge against a man named Kargan and finds himself at odds with the King of no the King's Nobles, a man who s sends his slaves and archers to take him down. Atlas survives and the conflict continues. Atlas survives and continues his quest. Well, I... I think I'd read this when it came out. I don't know. I did. I've never. I don't think I've read all of these. But I enjoyed it. It's seventies Kirby. It's it's big. It's bold. It's brash. Um, the art's stunning. It is absolutely stunning. It's I like. I've not read a lot of DC Kirk. I mean, I've read certain arcs of Kirby's DC. It makes that make me terrible. My my brother would probably hit me because he's a giant Kirby fan. Excuse me while I drink a sip of tea. Um, I'm enjoying it. Um, I've got one of the Kirby trades I would like to, I th I, at some point I'm going to, with the app, read all the Kirby New God stuff, or read the New Gods in uh, order, because I've never done it. But it's a solid comic book. It is not something you would see today. It is very simple. The character designs are great. Yeah, I, I'm going to make this comparison. 
And I'm not comparing Keith Giffen, who I'm a huge fan of, and Jack Kirby. But this is the Kirby equivalent of Chunky Giffen. That's my that's my analogy. Um, it's a fun comic. It's the big, epic uh, kind of stuff Kirby did with Thor and with New Gods, and it's a lot of fun. Atlas did come back with uh, in uh, James Robinson's Superman, and I remember when that happened it, and was intrigued, and I, I started buying Superman again, and it, it was around the year when Robinson and Johns were doing Superman, and I dipped in and out, so I don't really... I may go and read those um, as we get deeper into this, because I have a feeling, because that was number one, Green Team is number two. I think he's going to go in order somehow. Um, or they, it's, this is a collaboration, in Danger Street. And so I, this was fun. It was neat to see him. Atlas is only in this a little bit. The main players in this are the heroes trying to get into the Justice League um, and the setup with the dingbats of Danger Street, where Jack Ryder is, where Lady Cop is, where they all are. It's them at the beginning of the story. And everyone is like, you know, is in a bad place. Everybody's starting at the bottom. Like you would find in a good detective novel. I think, uh, as I said, you, it's a good first chapter. I'm enjoying it. I really couldn't put Roshark down. So I'm intrigued. The art's beautiful. I think check it out. We'll be, I'll be back in a month and we'll talk about issue number two. Uh, or is there laboring them book? This is book one. Book two and issue number two of first issue specials, which is The Dingbats of Danger Street. Um, which I have not read, which is another... Um, no, I'm sorry, The Green Team Boy Millionaires, which is written by Joan Simon and art by Jerry Grandinetti, um, which I've never read. So the order in which they were published, let me just read this so you guys can get a, an idea. There's a great forward by Jerry Conway in this book um, that he wrote in 2019, which is nice. I like a good... Um, uh, I will probably quote it as we get deeper in. Atlas the Great Number 1, The Green Team Boy Millionaires... Uh, Metamorpho, the Elephant Man, which is uh, Bob Haney and Ramona Fraden. Haney, Fraden, fun. Uh, Lady Cop, Robert Kaniger, uh, Penser Joan Rosenberger, Inker Vinnie Coletta. Uh, Manhunter, number is not number five. Uh, another Jack Carey, uh, Jack Kirby, D. Bruce Berry thing. Um, and as is issue six, which is Dingbats of Danger Street. Mike Royer is in on that inking. Um, I like Mike Royer on. Um, Kirby. Creeper, uh, Michael Flesher, Steve Ditko, Mike Royer, Warlord, Mike Grell, Mike Grell, Mike Grell. Dr. Fate, um, Martin Pascal, and Walt Simonson. Early Walt Simonson is glorious. Uh, if you've never seen the Alien adaptation he did, um, it's I think it's out in hardback somewhere and you have to get it on eBay, but it's, it's worth it. Uh, Outsiders, which is an Ernie Chan cover, Joe Simon, another Jerry G. Grandinetti, and Craig Flessel. Inking. That's an odd one I know I've never read. Codename Assassin, uh, Jerry Conway, Steve Skeets, Frank Renando, and Al Milgram Art. Um, Starman, Jerry Conway, Mike Vosberg, uh, Mike Royer, who I'm very familiar with that Starman because I am a Starman fan. And then, oh, I'm sorry, the New Gods number one is Mike Vosberg. Uh, the regular series was Don Newton. So I hope you like my jumping on this. You know, the concept that um, King and Fornes is doing, uh, me jumping onto it as a way to examine super team books and other ways of telling stories. I am a fan of some of DC's, of the idea of different labels in comics. I think a broad variety of type of storytelling is always good. I, DC gets, I think DC, I think the big two have problems. I think everybody talks about them. And I think some people and some of us get very angry. I don't get angry about it. I, I've stopped. I've stopped getting angry at corporations who put out my my stories and more worry about just find what I can enjoy. I'm not part of the process. I'm a fan, an older fan, which means I get to dip into the past and, t and jump in and take sample what is now uh, you know a medium that I've been following f since 1973. So almost. 50 years. So it, I, it's not going to be it was when I was a kid. It's not going to be it was when I was in my prime reading, which was my 20s. I'm almost 60. I'm jumping in and out. So I look at these new books and want to try something new. I want to see. I, I, I 
probably talked about this on this thing, that I've done theater, that the reinterpretation of stories and storytelling is part of storytelling. Theater people go, why do we keep doing plays that are from Shakespeare, seven, you know, they're, whatever, 800 years old. Because they're good stories and we reinterpret them. That's what you do with stories. You you bring them in, you digest them, and then if you're a good storyteller, you take bits and pieces of them and you try something new with it. That's what I see in this concept. It's what I'm gonna, I want to explore and I hope you're going to enjoy that journey with me because these are two comics that were written almost 50 years apart. I'm, you know, it, that's, it, it may be a gem. It may not work. I don't know. I got, it's early on. I think it's neat to compare compare and contrast and see why a storyteller is trying things. I think part of comic books, they do repeat themselves like film does. It, it's stuff like secular. I'll go to one of my pet peeves in DC right now is the event things. Everybody's kind of event burned out. I don't think I'm the only one. They're repeating themselves. They're going with what's tried and true. But they're also doing young, young um, reader novels, which I think is a great idea. Because you need to replace us older fans. I hate to say that. You, they should be constantly trying to find new ways to get young readers. And I, I, I don't have an answer to it, but I do think it's a big thing. This is not for young readers. I like that they do uh, young YA novels. And I like that they have the black label. Um, the other history of DC Comics, I've read... Um, I missed an issue, so I, got, I read two issues, and I never got three because I just missed it. And then I realized I didn't have it all, so I haven't read it. I'm going to read that over uh, vacation in uh, January and then probably do an episode about it because I'm intrigued about it telling the story from the heroes of people of the people of color let me retell these older characters through another person's lens and share it so that's kind of what I'm looking at here Uh, as you notice there wasn't a Defenders issue um, episode this week because I had a big we had a big visitor at work but I didn't have the bandwidth to record Thursday because that's when the visit was. The visit was on Friday, and I was, you know, all week just stressed out about it. <laughs> it tried to not uh, bring that, you know, I just wasn't focused. So we will. I will do um, the Wrecking Crew story next week as we get closer to Christmas. I am going to do a Christmas episode. I'm going to record it in the middle of the week and post it. It will be the Teen Titans my take on the Teen Titans Christmas Carol. I just watched my favorite Christmas Carol before I recorded this, the Alistair Sim one. It is a masterpiece. Me and my wife had a little date night while she's house-sitting and dog-sitting a friend's dog, and we watched, of course, the classic Muppet Christmas Carol, and we watched um, the Christmas Story sequel that um, um, young man that played Ralph, uh, Mr. Billingsley, John Billingsley, did, It's um, which is a lot of fun. And, you know, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law are coming, and my other brother-in-law lives here. We're going to have a good Christmas. And um, I was allowed to sell off some PTO, give my wife to pay off some debt, and to treat myself for Christmas. I have bought several Omnis, probably too many. I got them at good deals. I've got a John Byrne one coming, which I can't wait for. I've got the first DC Who's Who one, and I have the second volume of New Warriors. I am only three arcs into New Warriors, and I'm hooked, and I will be covering... Um, that next art coming up soon. Um, if you hear Jingle Bells, it's seasonal. It is our cat monkey with her uh, holiday collar on being annoyed. Uh, but folks, that is for tonight. I'm going to go uh, relax. I've got the house to myself. It's just me and the cats. I'm going to co- make another cup of hot tea, go sit on my balcony in the chilly air, and view the lights of Monument Avenue here in Richmond, try to get into a seasonal mood. And read some more comics. I have just finished Avengers X-Men Eternals. And I will do a review of that later. I want to let that soak in. I read like eight issues today. Until until um, you tune in on Tuesday for our um, next Legion issue episode. Issue. Why do I always want to say that? Episode. Um, you all be safe. Be smart. Be kind. It's the holidays. Let's everybody take a breath and be kind. Please wear a mask and wash your hands. I will say this in Richmond, there is a wicked RSV. There is an awful case of, there is um, a lot of people with influenza and a lot of people catching COVID again. It just take a pause, folks. I know you, we, we did it for a long time, but I think it's, you know, I'm wearing a mask everywhere I go. We got a lot of kids in hospitals nowadays, so be safe, okay? Be smart, be kind. 
and read some comics.